But I want to talk to you about winning. How many of you want to win? I want to remind you of something. You are one decision away from changing your life. You're one new meeting, one new relationship, one new action, one new decision away from shifting your life from where it is right now to a totally different place. So what's the decision? There's something you've been hesitating on. There's a contact you need to make. There's a job you need to quit. There's a relationship you need to engage in. Maybe there's a relationship you need to leave. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a decision that you need to make to take you to the next level because decisions shape our destiny when they're backed up by some massive action. But you can't take the action if you don't decide. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice. If you don't like your present address, change it. You're not a tree. People avoid being desperate. You might think that's a negative thing, but when you're in a desperate place, you take the best actions. Those of you that are achieving, one of the reasons the achievement is slowed down is you've allowed yourself to feel less desperate. When you were broke and starting your business, or when you were brand new in your relationship and you were desperate to get her to love you, you took massive big action. So when you remove desperation, all this bullshit creeps into your life where you think you have to have the perfect plan and look the perfect way and have the perfect thoughts and be all zen and perfect. What you need is to be desperate. What you need is to get after it. Why? Because our obsessions become our possessions. Start working and developing yourself now and prepare yourself for what it is that you want because you expect to get it. It was Whitney Young, he said, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. When you want something out of life, don't worry about how you're going to get it. How is none of your business. The most difficult thing it is, is to hold the vision. It's to hold the vision. You want to be persistent about what it is that you want to achieve. Alexander Graham Bell said, what this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man or a woman is in that state of mind in which he or she knows exactly what he or she wants and is fully determined not to quit until they find it. What you obsess about most regularly, you will eventually possess in your life what our dreams are, what we believe we deserve, when we become obsessed about those things, long term, we end up possessing those things. When our children are learning how to walk, how many times will your baby attempt to walk and fall and you just say, just sit down, don't try anymore, you've fallen 20 times. When will a baby walk? It will walk when it walks. That's when it will walk. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it, four or five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line where if they had the determination just to keep on knocking. It's a funny thing about life. If you're home one day, and someone is knocking on the door and you say, I don't want to be bothered today. And if that person just keep on knocking, can you believe that fool's still knocking? <laughs> Pretty soon you say, what is it? What do you want? And that's how you've got to be about your dream. Some people, well, I guess ain't nobody home. <laughs> I knocked on the door, but nobody came. Oh, no, no, no. See, life is not just that simple. It's not that cut and dry. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness because they're casual about life. And when you are casual about life, you will end up a casualty. So I encourage you to be persistent. The external results of our life in order to replace ourselves with the next best version requires intention, requires obsession, requires desperation. So it's not unnatural to change. Your friends that think you're crazy to have started your business or come to a seminar or spend money you don't have, they're the crazy ones. It's unnatural to be the same person you are right now next year. The 35 year old you should be gone next year forever and there should be a brand new better 36 year old. 
You should constantly be replacing yourself just like your bones do, just like your cells do. It's natural to be replacing ourselves, but we're around people who aren't, so we think it's natural not to. Your identity is the thoughts, concepts, and beliefs that you hold to be most true about yourself. Here's how it works. This is how life works. I can teach you all of the mechanics of winning. But winning is about 75% psychology, about 25% mechanics. And if you can't get the psychology part right, you can do all the actions perfectly and still not produce the results you want. Here's why. Your identity is like a thermostat setting for your entire life. It's not the external things that enter our lives that dictate what our life is like. You have a thermostat setting for your relationships, for your faith, for your money, for your body, for your business. And what's happened to you over and over again, you're a 75 degree or let's say in business, and you start to get it going. It's going better than it's ever gone before. The results are incredible. And then all of a sudden, 90 days later, you've cooled your life back down to 75 degrees again. In your body, and you got in shape, you started eating good, you were working out, you're a 90, 95 degree body. 90 days later, you cooled it back down to 75 again. This regulates everything in our life can't exceed your identity long term it'll never happen this is why people's lives yo-yo up and down because they always work on the external mechanics and not the internal identity of their lives and this governs your happiness your peace your fitness your money i'm standing up here because i'm great at adjusting my thermostat setting there's a misnomer in the world that man for a lot of competitive people drivers are like hey if i enjoy myself right now i'm going to lose all my drive I'm just going to delay my happiness. Once I get that relationship, then I'll let myself be happy. Once I have the house, then I'll be happy. Once I have the car, then I'll be happy. The problem is you have to bring you to all those places. And people think if I lose, if I let myself enjoy my life right now, I might lose my edge. In fact, if you don't enjoy the victories as you go, your brain doesn't produce any dopamine, and you actually lose the desire to continue to perform. There's a direct correlation between celebrating your wins and wanting to do more of them. You gotta quit negotiating the price. Right now, make the decision that any price is worth it as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral for you to make your family proud of you. Stop negotiating the price. This negotiation you keep doing in your mind. Is this really where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? It steals all your energy, it steals your focus. That know those babies of yours, your parents. Guess what? They're worth the sacrifice. I don't know whether or not you're going to live, but I know for sure you're going to die. And I don't know whether or not you're gonna live before you die. Most of us are not living because we're so worried about what everybody thinks about us. Or maybe what we don't feel about ourselves. Let me say something to you real clear. If you spend the rest of your life worrying about what everybody thinks about you, someday you'll never have to worry about it again because when you die, nobody will remember you were here. Live your dream, worry about the people you love. And by the way, I know some of the very people you're doing it for are the ones not supporting you. They're the ones telling you to quit. Just do it anyway. I don't want you to have that happen at the end of your life where all these things you were capable of, all the possibilities, all the moments, all the travel, all the trips, none of it happens because you won't fight for your family. You won't get obsessed for what you want. You won't transfer energy to people. You won't work on your identity. All that's on the line is your dadgum life. That's all, just your life. That's all we're talking about here is just you, your precious soul who's enough who can do whatever he or she ever dreamed of, if they'll just start believing it, if they'll start taking massive action, you were born to do something magic in small ways and big ways. Maybe it's not gonna be millions of dollars. Maybe it's gonna be one person you inspire with your story, what you overcome with one person can change the world. I know how great you are. I know what you're capable of. I know this, your dream's gonna be tattered all the time. Sometimes you just gotta hold it together with hope. I don't know what you got to hold it together with, but here's what I know about you last. You were born to do something special with your life. You're not invisible. You're loved. You're believed in. You came here with a purpose. 